this is going to be my review for 24 Hour Party People from 2002. Um, I don't know what really got this on my radar. Um, probably uh, the main main star and director, but I guess I'm just in like in a movie watching mode. I just watched uh, the James James Brown movie Get On Up right before this. There's actually some same actors appear in here too, and I don't. I guess I didn't. When I started watching this, it was not what I expected. I don't know what I was expecting, but I thought it was going to be more of a comedy. It's directed by Michael Winterbottom and stars Steve Coogan, and they're pretty well known for... They did a couple movies and a series called The Trip. And it's a comedy where Steve Coogan's character and another guy, they go and are just eating food, and it's supposed to be really funny. I haven't seen him yet. Um, actually, I actually haven't seen too much from Steve Coogan. But he's a pretty well-known personality in Britain. Um, I guess he's played a guy named like Alan Partridge for quite a while, and so and I don't know. I guess I thought this was going to be more of a straight-up comedy or something kind of dealing with music. But I started watching it, and it's actually about um, so Steve Coogan is playing a guy named Tony Wilson. It's a real guy. This is based on like a um, real events. He Tony Wilson was. A TV personality, kind of like a reporter in England, but he also on the side he was really involved with like music, and he started a, a record company called Factory Records, and he also started um, having a couple clubs. And it starts out like in the punk scene, and there's a couple, a very small group of people watching the Sex Pistols like first performance. A lot of people in the audience become some pretty influential musicians later, and this is kind of the story of who those people were. And so one of the first bands that they follow is uh, Joy Division and kind of how they formed. And the main uh, lead singer from Joy Division is Ian Curtis, and he's played by Sean Harris here, who I kind of recognized. He was in Prometheus and a couple other things. So it's kind of like the first band they follow and them trying to make a record. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, Andy Serkis pretty well known as you know Gollum and doing a lot of motion capture stuff as a real acting role here he plays a uh, Martin Hannett who's like a, a record producer he does this first Joy Division uh, record and if you don't know Joy Division was like kind of like a post-punk band and Ian Curtis was suffering from like seizures and was really depressed and ended up uh, hanging himself really early in the band's career so they didn't get much done together but they're very influential had really good songs and then they turn into new order and so we kind of see that a little bit but it's kind of around when tony wilson is has a club in manchester and then later they kind of evolve from post-punk to kind of the very beginnings of the rave scene when he starts um another club called hacienda that involves into like what the rave culture is and it's like this huge becomes a huge scene in Manchester and it's kind of the place to be with where to see music and a lot of other stuff so it's kind of that shows that um, evolving and some of the other like managers one of the other managers is played by uh, Patty Considine is another kind of recognizable British actor as well as uh, another guy is played by uh, Lenny James who I just saw in the uh, James Brown movie, Get On Up. And again, he's pretty well known as playing Morgan right now in The Walking Dead. So he's like another guy that's involved with this factory records. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It's not like 100% factual of Tony Wilson's life, uh, but they kind of make it pretty obvious that some things are true, some things are a little stretched from the truth, but it's pretty interesting, and I just had, like, a very different mindset. I thought it was going to be, like, something like This Is Spinal Tap or something when it started, but then it ended up being a pretty, you know, realistic movie about this guy who becomes, like, owns this factory records and owns these clubs and just how influential this scene was for music. And it was pretty interesting. I, was, I got really into it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was going to be a little, like, uh, more a uh, comedy, but it's... It's got some funny parts, but it's much more of a drama and a biography. So it's pretty interesting. Um, some of the other movies I thought it was kind of like was, um, I haven't seen this movie, but CBGB's is another pretty recent movie about 
how that club got started with Alan Rickman plays the guy that started that club. Um, I think that'd be pretty similar. Oh, I've wanted to check that one out for a while. I, th I, caught, I thought a little bit about the movie Frank. That follows like just one band the whole time, and that's a pretty quirky comedy, but it's also kind of serious and dramatic and kind of has a similar feel. Mm. And then, um, well, there's one movie, I don't know how similar it would be, but uh, there's a movie called Control, which is just about Ian Curtis and um, the band Joy Division that he's in. So that's, that'd probably have a lot of similarities, too. That's supposed to be pretty good. I want to check that one out, too. But um, then there's, I guess, I, there's the other band I didn't mention later with the Hacienda, with the rave scene. There's a band called Happy Mondays, who I wasn't really familiar with. But I guess they're pretty influential in that kind of house, I don't know, house music, uh, trip acid music, whatever it's called, that kind of rave music. So they follow them to kind of towards the end of the movie. And um, it's, it's shot pretty interestingly. It's pretty gritty and kind of feels like um, like a very independent 90s movie almost, kind of like a Clerks or something. It's not black and white, but kind of had that early 90s feel to it. It was pretty interesting because it's made in 2002, but um, but yeah, I, I liked it. Um, it was just kind of funny going in and not expecting this type of movie. I thought it was gonna be a comedy, and it ended up being a pretty pretty uh, educational, enlightening movie because I didn't really know a lot about any of these characters. You know, I know who Joy Division is, and they show the Sex Pistols at the very beginning, but they're not really in it. So it was kind of cool just to learn about these people and this scene in Manchester. Um, that's because I really like music and and movies, so, you know, put them together. Um, I'm, I'm going to be a fan of that. So, yeah, um, I'm going to give it a, a 3.75 out of 5. So, pretty high, pretty high recommend. Um, I think it's one of those... This is definitely going to be one of those lesser-known films. Um, like I said, I don't even remember what really made it pop up on my radar. I think maybe to, probably just Steve Coogan and Michael Winterbottom there partnership that did turn into comedies um but yeah if you like music if you like kind of independent movies dealing with the music scene uh, this would definitely be one uh to put on your list to watch so yeah i'd recommend it um again i'll give it a, a 3.75 out of 5 okay